Um, hello, today we're going to be going over measuring traffic from the 2019 February Bronze Contest. And yeah, in this video, I'll be going over, I guess, the overall problem and also I'll provide a hint to get you started. Um, so um, the goal of this problem is to find the most specific possible range that describes the rate of traffic flow before and after Farmer John, uh, before and after the highway adjacent to Farmer John's barn. And so by range, they want um, a minimum and a maximum value for the amount of traffic flow at those places. Um, yeah, so let's just visualize the problem. Um, so N represents the, um, the number of miles of highway and n can be at most 100. If you look at this example, we have n is 4, so I have it divided into four segments. And so for each segment or each mile, Farmer John has um, a sensor that produces um, a maximum and a minimum amount of traffic flow at that particular segment. So here, if it's like 1 and 4, it's basically telling us that there's at least one unit of traffic flow and at most one, uh, four units of traffic flow at this mile of the highway. Um, there can also be ramps um, on the highway. And so the ramps can either feed traffic in to the highway or they can take traffic out of the highway. And if there is a ramp in a particular segment of the highway, then the sensor will record the traffic flow of the ramp, but not the highway. And there can be at most one ramp per high, uh, segment of the highway or per mile of the highway. And yeah, so um, our goal is basically to find these values, uh, which is like a range, a min and the max of traffic flow at these uh, positions. And yeah, so let's take a look at the input. So we're given that N is four, which means that there's gonna be four miles and consequently four sensors. And the next N lines describe each, um, I guess, mile of the highway. If we look here, we're given a string on and then two integers. So the first string is rep uh, represents whether or not there's a ramp and if there is which type. So if it's, if the string is on, that means there's a ramp feeding traffic in. If it's off, that means there's a ramp feeding traffic out. And if it's none, that means there's no ramp. So like I said before, if there's a ramp, it's going to give you the sensor data from the ramp itself. Um, and if there's no ramp, it's going to give you traffic data from the segment of the highway. Uh, yeah, so if we look here, the first mile has a ramp feeding traffic in, and then it has at least one and at most one unit of traffic flow. So this basically means that there's only one unit of traffic flow on the highway, I mean, sorry, on the ramp feeding into the highway. Uh, the next line we have that there's no ramp and that there's at least 10 units and at most 14 units of traffic flow on the second mile of the highway, and this goes on for the next end lines. Um, yeah, so that's basically um, the whole problem. And so I guess as a hint, let's take a look and first let's make like a, I guess a fundamental observation and that it's that since we're trying to find two things in this problem, the first being like the amount of traffic flow before and the second being the amount of traffic flow after, we want to split the problem into two parts. And so, Yeah, so I guess what we want to do is we want to, I guess, look at these as two distinct parts of the problem.
And so once we've made that observation, I guess we can focus on, you know, um, how can we find the solution to the first part? So find traffic flow before the highway. And so let me just copy and paste the input. Yeah. Okay, so we have the input. So, um, so the task is to find um, obviously the most specific possible range. And so let's think of it as um, we have like some large numbers here. Um, I guess those numbers are basically irrelevant, but what we want to do is as we go, um, as we like loop through the sensor data, we want to uh, more and more shrink the, um, the min and max answers until we come up with the, um, I guess you could say the smallest range while in, while fitting all the requirements of the sensor data. So, um, it might not make sense now, but it will later. And that's, I guess, a pretty big hint for this problem, but yeah. So let's just get into um, a little bit more detail. So if we're trying to find the traffic flow before the highway, so we're trying to find what's here. Uh, let's take a look at, you know, what would happen if, um, what would happen if we're just looking at these two sensors? So we're given that there's a ramp that feeds traffic in, and this one's pretty easy because it's just one and one, so there's one going in. And then here we have that there's at least 10 and at most 14. So what could be here? Well, since we're given that uh, one unit of traffic came onto the ramp prior to this set, this range, I guess you could say, then we're given that whatever came before will be one less than whatever came after this ramp, if that makes sense, because we're adding one here. So whatever's here will be one less. So if we think about it, if um, it has to be one less, then uh, the range has to be uh, one less than both of these. So it'd be nine and 13. Um, the reason being is that um, like if there is 14 right here, and one unit of traffic came onto this ramp in the first segment of the highway, then the second segment would have 15 and not 14. So that's yeah, basically the logic behind it. And yeah, so what we're basically doing is that we're looking at this piece of information and this piece of information, and we're basically calculating what we have here. So why don't we try expanding it to here? Well, now we have that we had 11 and 15 in the third sec segment of the highway. I'll just label it down here. Um, but in the previous segment, we were given that there's 10 and 14. So nothing has changed, but um, the min and max maxes are different. And uh, when we're given this case, we basically want to make sure that we have um, a range of values that um, I guess that works for both of these, um, uh, I guess we can call them ranges given by the sensors. And so what range fits for 11 and 15 and also 10 and 14? And that would be 11 and 14 because obviously 10 does not go in between 11 and 15, and 15 doesn't go between 10 and 14. So yeah, we're given that um, it's 11 and 14. This is like the most specific range we can get from these two values. So now we have 11 and 14 here. And then uh, we're given that, you know, one came on to the highway at this ramp on the first segment of the highway. So 
like we did before, we'll just subtract 1. And so now we're given 10 and 13. And so basically what we're doing is we're kind of iterating backwards and then updating our range of values based on, you know, the current state. Okay, so let's just try this last one. Um, Let me just draw here. So now that we're given that a ramp takes two, at least two or at most three units of traffic off of the highway, we're gonna try working backwards from here. Uh, let me just clear this here. Okay, so um, we have two comma three and um, I guess unlike what we observed earlier, uh, we're starting with a ramp, and so we don't really have like uh, a set piece or a set range to go off of because we only know how much is going off, but we don't know how much might have been earlier. So let's just say, um, let's just set, um, or actually, sorry, let's just ignore this idea. Um, the fact that we have two comma three, and then let's just go to the next one. So we have 11 and 15. And so given that two and three come off the ramp after this 11 and 15, you know, we don't really get any new, I mean, it's not really gonna change this because this is the most specific um, range we have at this point in the highway. And even though, um, this many cars might come off of the highway at a later point, that's not gonna impact um, how much comes previously. And yeah. So um, to recap, what we basically did is we took, we started from the very end and we iterated upwards um, for the first part of the problem in order to find the amount of traffic flow before the highway. And based on the conditions, uh, whether or not there's a ramp and which type of ramp, we're basically, um, I guess, updating the min and max range that will eventually become our answer. So yeah, that's the, um, I guess, first hint. And thank you for watching.